Hello, and welcome to Mode of Cosmic Therapy. I am Paula Andrea Pyle, and I welcome you to join us for the next 60 minutes. And I want to especially welcome our guest, Bridget Nicole Pyle, back with us this week. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. I love having you guys having me on. So, I so love fun having you and I know the audience loves seeing your beautiful <laughs> face and hearing the interaction that we have each week. It's really been fun. It has been. It's been really interesting. For those of you who do not know anything about Bridget, first of all, she's a Pisces. I, I bring that up because one time, one day, sometime, I'm going to get around to teaching astrology. Maybe. Maybe not. I keep telling Mitzi I am. Mitzi's on the camera and Sandy, of course, is in the control room and we are delighted to have them with us each week. Without them, you know, the show wouldn't be possible. But anyway, mode of cosmic therapy for any of you who have never viewed the show before. What we do is completely random. We just um, take what comes up what comes out, what goes in, and we blend it all together, and we try to show how everything in life is connected. Nothing whatsoever is disconnected. And that's why when you see all of this stuff here each week, um, I just pull it random, whatever it would be. And my guest, such as Bridget, she has no idea. She has no idea, not a clue no in the world of what I'm going to say, right. how I'm going to say it, how I'm going to involve her. And that's the way life should be all day long. Do not have expectations of how things should be or should not be because they're going to be how they're going to be. And of course there's going to be standards and you're going to have integrity and you've got duty and you've got honor and you've got all of those things that are indelibly implanted in you. And if you are tuned, tuned and attuned, we used that word the other day, to that matrix core center innocence inner child inner sense um, you don't have to be concerned with trying to see or follow up on your actions to make sure it turned out the way that you wanted it to turn out because if you have an idea of how it's supposed to be turned out and it doesn't turn out that way then you're going to be disappointed and you're going to get mad and you're going to start abolishing how about that word? Let's use that word today. Abolish. All right, Bridget. Let's start. You know, I had told you, and I kept that in my mind, too. What? I had told you last week um, that I was going to tell you that beautiful love story. Oh, yeah. You never got around to that. And so. I'm going to. I really am going to. But, you know, I usually don't carry things over anything such as that. So if it arises on its own, and if the theme goes in that direction, then... Um, we will go with that. And okay. if it doesn't, we won't. How about that? There's well, that flight. hopefully it does, because I just want to hear, hear the story. All right. Well, we'll just drop all the cards on the ground. Well, let's do it, along with those glasses. <laughs> okay. Okay, let me have those. So we're not going to use the ones that's on the ground, because they fell out. They're all over the ground. Do you see one? Keep <gasps> silent. I keep silent? Yeah. All right, write it down. Keep silent. And I see incorrigible. Uh-oh. That would be a word to describe me, I think Jimmy would say. <laughs> Maybe he would. Maybe he wouldn't be that kind. I'm laughing. I've been married um, March the 6th. Sixth. Bridget's birthday. Yeah. I will be married 43 years. Woo. 40. A oh boy. And that is preeminent. Okay, well, let's not drop any more. Okay, let's not. Let's go. Wait a minute, there's one turned over, Bridget. Let's put it. That's the Spanish singer. Do something nice and unexpected for someone over 50. Okay. Okay? Did you hear that, Bridget? <laughs> uh, look at Mitzi. I'm over Do here. something nice and unexpected for someone over 50. Okay. There's another one. You just don't want me to pick a card. How about that? I've had these cards all this time. That word is supposed to be intoxicated. There's an R in it. Intoxicated. Interesting. Okay, we'll throw that one down. Let's go with this one. Let's go with it. All right, what you got, sweetie? 
everything has something to do with it. <laughs> All right, you saw it. We Basically. dropped some yep. one time. We dropped some the second time. I'm holding some. I pulled one that said do something nice. And then she pulls the very theme of cosmic therapy. Everything has something to do with it. Everything. Everything. When you cried your heart out, when your first love broke your heart, it had something to do with it. And when you laughed, I suppose you laughed, when you went to the prom in your most beautiful, gorgeous <laughs> orange dress, it had something to do with it. I went to prom in a green dress. That was my pageant dress. Get it right. Oh, that's right. Because your sister is going to be wanting to wear that dress. That's why I've got the prom in my mind. Um, I hope she does because it's such a beautiful dress. It is a beautiful dress. It is. A be you did have a green dress. And that was beautiful too. But I just remember you. Well, I've got <laughs> lots of pictures of you okay. in the, a green dress. Anyway, the orange, the orange, the orange. I um, wonder what the orange is going to do this hour. Let's find huh? out. Okay, I will. What's that? Looks like a long... Okay, don't read the whole thing. Okay, Just well, it's Reflections, 21st Century. Okay. Um, what is commitment and what does it mean to you? All right. Commitments that are made in clay will turn to mud when the rain comes. Wait! I just love it. i got to do a dance. I really have got to do a dance. Wow. Um, because that is the most beautiful sentence I think I've ever heard for this moment that I'm hearing it. Okay. Even though I'm the one that wrote it. It is so beautiful. Read that again. Okay. <laughs> I love that. Commitments that are made in clay will turn to mud when the rain comes. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's some of those ideas we hold in our, in our hearts. I'm going to be with you forever, darling. You don't know that at all. And that is an ignorant statement to make. Be present this moment, and that is forever. That is forever. Okay. I agree. Okay. You will find yourself mirrored down with problems, burdens, obligations, restrictions, and involvements. Mm. Do not confuse the commitment issue by dragging things of the past into it. All right. There's nothing that can be done about yesterday. It is the present you are dealing with. Absolutely. Regret and remorse are sorrowful bed partners. Wait a minute. Regret and remorse are sorrowful bed partners. Sorrowful bed partners. And if you're going to have a bed partner, he ought to at least, or she ought to be something good to look at, don't you think? Right. Okay. You are happy as you will ever be in this very instant. Oh. You got to put music oh. to it. Okay. Come on. I'll dance. Let's with do you. it. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Do it? Yeah. Say the song again. Um, you are happy. Read it. You are happy as you will ever be in this very moment. That's right. I'm happy as I'll ever <laughs> be in this moment. Thank you, darling. Yeah. Okay. Everything in your life occurred exactly in the order to bring you this very place. <gasps> Everything. Bridget, now let's just stay with that just a moment. Okay. Just a moment, all right? I'm looking right dead at you, Mitzi, and the light is not on. You remember when I told y'all a couple of shows ago, I said, Mitzi, how do I know which camera to look at? And she said, look at the one that has the light on. I am looking at you, Mitzi, and the light is not on. This light is on, so I'm looking at this camera. I'm making fun, darling. You know I love you to pieces. Anyway, um, Bridget, what were we talking about? Everything in your life occurred exactly in order to bring you to this place. Okay, and that's what I mean. Even with trying to say, you know, because Mitzi was absolutely trying to tell me, look at the one with the red light. Okay, so I got it in my head, and she wanted it to be in my head, to look at the one with the red light. Okay, the red light's not on. So don't look at that one. Right. There you go. That's some of those plans again. Mm -hmm. You see in commitments made in clay, when yeah. it rains, it'll turn into mud. But everything in your life, honey, has happened to bring you to that seat here at Channel 10, RTN, in Raleigh on February the 26th, 2013. Okay, today. Yeah. Everything in your life. Yeah. You wouldn't have been anywhere else but here, right here, on right. this moment. I love it. So whatever you are doing, and whoever you are with, and whatever engagement that you are involved in, 
everything in your life brought you to that moment in time. And all you have to do is follow the bouncing red light. And then you'll, you'll get it right. Right. <laughs> Private joke. Should we okay. continue? Yes. Okay. Nothing could, should, would have been done differently. It is a matter of coming clean with yourself and accepting your life filled with all of the seemingly imperfection precisely as it is. Okay. This Solman time of reflection has been brought to you about your need to gratify something. Release the need and you will also release the uncertainty in yourself. Okay, wait a minute. Mitchie, my board's gone. But maybe my blue marker will show up on this page. So you said we are dealing with what right now? Some kind of gratifying? What would you say, darling? Um, I said the Solman time of reflection has been brought about you and your need to gratify something. Gratify. All right. So Mitzi's got to gratify something because she is the one behind the camera watching us talk about it. I've got to gratify something because I'm hearing you say it. You've got to gratify something because you're reading it. And Sandy's got to gratify something because she's back in the control room trying to keep up with, you know, where we have to go and how we turn our faces and all that stuff. So there's a gratification process that's going on. But the next sentence, gratify, gratify. You know when I look at this word, that was a beautiful song, Gravity. Mm -hmm. But I don't know why I was looking at that and hearing that song. Give me the first line of that. How does that go? Do you know? Oh, Lord. I know the song, but I don't know. It, who did it? Um, John Mayer. <coughs> it's pretty, isn't it? Yeah. Is it a love song? Yeah. It is? Do you know any words? Give me one word out of it. Gravity has taken you away from me or something like that. Okay. I'm going to write that part. I'm going to say it has taken you away from me and we'll see how that's going to tie into whatever you're getting ready to say okay um release the need and you will be and you will also release the uncertainty in yourself ah be wait totally a minute release release the need release the need to gratify release the need to gratify now your definition of gratify? Um, what's your definition of gratify? Please somebody. Yeah, that's easy. Release that need. So I have no need to please you. Okay? Okay. I have none. Do you have any need to please me? Uh, no. Now, but most of the time, honey, don't people think you're really selfish when you do that? I mean, they think that you're, what, a bitch? I, I mean, guess, but it's just, you know, their way of looking at your situation. Yeah. Well, release that need, and it says what will happen? Release the need, and you will also release the uncertainty in yourself. Uncertainty. Now we're talking uncertainty. We're, if we release the need to please another, or to think we're supposed to please another, or to bring some sort of happiness or... Um, pleasure or something to another, we release the uncertainty. Bridget, what's happening here is this show, we've done two together, this is our third, this is kind of tying it all together. We always think that each show, you know, everything has something to do with it, but what has happened is they've gravitated to this part because what it's saying is if we get rid of that need to try to make somebody else happy, we get rid of the uncertainty in ourselves where we don't know what to do. Yeah. Okay, we don't know what to do because the need to try to be pleasing that can be directed towards up. That goes back to your pointy razor. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, be totally committed to who you are and face the demons. They vanish. Wow. Who you are. Now you tell me how in the world you can rectify having demons and being a good person. Huh? You're going to have to tell me that one. All right. <laughs> Rectify the need and the idea that you are a good, supportive, helpful, interested, caring, um, what's some more, generous, selfless. Give me all those words people want to identify with themselves. All of those Happy. things. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, but those, that's a fleeting thing, right? right. You demonstrated that. I mean, you um, demonstrated that with your ability to stand up and sing whatever it was we were singing a mm -hmm. moment ago. It's a fleeting thing. But when we get rid of that need, when we get rid of that need to pacify, gratify, then we get rid of the uncertainty that we feel. And you will agree with that. We feel uncertain. We don't even know why we feel uncertain. Mm -hmm. You know, we get up and we may be at odds with ourselves and we don't know why. Right. We, you know, all those moods that come in and out. Let me see. Be totally committed to who you are. Face the demons. They vanish. Okay. The only way that we can face the demons that we have is by facing the uncertainty of who we are, who you are. Mm -hmm. You're not going to know. You're not going to get an answer before you travel down the road. You're, you're going to have to be without a job and not know where you're going to go or what's going to come up. You're going to have to. And you'll fill it in just the same way with relationships. You're going to have to be without them in order to face the demons of that need to have one. Okay? Right. Because you're going to survive without having a job. I mean, that's a fact. Whoever, if anybody didn't have a job, they're going to survive. They're going to keep living. And something is going to occur in the meantime. The same way with a relationship. But when you're so busy, you read that. I don't know which card you read it out of, but you read it. Um, stop with the busyness. Stop with that. Be silent, I think you said. Right. Busyness. Stop with the busyness. You take that I out of there. Business. Take the I out of it because it crowds you. Look at that Pisces sign. Mm -hmm. Look at that Pisces sign that just formed. <laughs> Is that not crazy? Yeah. Take the I out of busyness. Keep silent. Be still. Okay, pull that, that singer one and see what that is, honey, since we did somehow get it. The Spanish.